This is session three, entitled Settling Down Despite the Upheaval. We have been living in unprecedented times in the last three and a half, almost four years. And we began with what Jesus said about the end times in Luke 21, 9, that all these things have to come to pass. So this just makes us know that that time is coming up on us. And we've looked at many times Second Thessalonians, but the reason why Paul wrote what he wrote about the Antichrist, the man of sin, is what we find in verse 2 of Second Thessalonians 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as at the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin reveal, be revealed, the son of perdition. That guy has, that son of perdition, that man of sin, has a lot of different titles in the Bible. Second only to Jesus. Jesus has many different titles in the Bible. But the man of sin would be second only to him, and he has a lot of them. One of them is... The lawless one. The lawless one. We are seeing that spirit of lawlessness right here in our country. Everywhere. They're defying the Supreme Court. They're finding ways to defy what the law says. The lawless spirit is alive and well. This is kind of the crux verse that I wanted us to be able to enjoy in settling down despite the upheaval. And so the more things change, the more they remain the same. There has always been upheaval in the world. We're coming to the end of this age, and this verse has comfort for us. The 119th Psalm is the longest psalm of all of them. And it's all about the Word. Every verse in the long 119th Psalm is about the Bible, about Amen. the Word. And there he says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So if his word is a settled issue in heaven, think about what that means. That's, you can't argue with his word. It's Amen. settled. If that's the case, then we can stand on those promises, his word, that he has given to us. And there's an interesting Psalm 138, verse 2. You may never have noticed this. It's fascinating. The psalmist says, I will worship toward the holy, thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. So the subject matter is the truth, the word of God, his truth and his goodness. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Now, if you know anything about the history of Israel... And you know what a big deal God's name is. I mean, he baked it right into the top ten list, right? Yep. You shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Yep. So it's a big deal. And here we find that God magnifies his word above his name. Now, all that means, and I've read the commentaries and they jump all over themselves and they, they trip all over themselves trying to, trying to explain how that doesn't mean that the word is more than the name. But that's what he said. He said he exalted his word above his name. Well, so they're all the same thing. You can't separate his name from him, from his word. Amen. And the point of God saying this is there's nothing more important, nothing more settled to go to our text than his word so as we stand on his promises what does that mean it means we take his word and we say i believe that's true Amen. so in our tumultuous times we've been dealing with all of these issues i'm not going to go through them again there are too many of them but these are the issues and this is where we ended up talking about artificial intelligence the last time these are these are 
world global events that are taking place. We're living in times when, when these kind of things can have a global impact like no other time in the history of the, of the, uh, the world. And so all of these things are interconnected. We've talked about them. So artificial intelligence. Here's where we ended up last uh, two weeks ago. Artificial intelligence will enable the man of sin to, to have, he will, he, will, he will seem to be omnipotent. He will seem to be omniscient, omnipresent, right? So we talked about the robots that will be placed potentially all over the world, that when one guy in one place, when he speaks because of our connectedness, all those robots that look like him will speak, and it will be as if he's speaking to the entire world all at once, mimicking God, who is everywhere all at the same time. That, that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to be God. That's what 2 Thessalonians 2 says. He's going to sit in the temple and convince himself that he's God. He's mad. I don't mean he's angry. He's insane. Amen. He literally is insane. And so this AI, I want to talk about that a little bit. I've been struggling with trying to figure out, not doubting it, but trying to figure out why Elon Musk and, and, and some of these really smart guys, and I'm telling you, Elon Musk is a genius. I, I listened to him, I, I read after an interview he had with uh, uh, some reporter in um, England, and he just destroyed the guy, just absolutely and simple as could be, because he's a genius. So I've been trying to figure out, why does Elon Musk say that artificial intelligence, in his words, were summoning the demon? Right? So he doesn't mean by that the same thing we would mean, but, but that, that tells you how he thinks about artificial intelligence. We are summoning something that's going to be really bad for us. I've been trying to struggle with that, because in the end, artificial intelligence is not intelligence, it is nothing more than what we see right here, a simple flow chart. This is what a computer is. So a flow chart. Let's, let's watch this. So you go from one thing to the next thing. You leave home. You check the time. If the time is before 7 a.m., then you go over to the no side. And you take the bus. If it's after 7 a.m., then you take the subway, right? That's a flow chart, right? So you leave home. If you've left home after seven, you need to take the subway if you want to get there on time, right? And based on you doing the flow chart, you will end up reaching school. Okay. Flow chart, that's all a computer is. Yes or no? Electronically, open and close circuits, a yes or a no, positive or a negative. That's all that a computer is. And so it, it follows the flow chart. If, if this is open this direction, then the next thing. If this, then that. It follows. That's all a computer is. But it happens at such a blinding fast speed you can't believe. I mean, it's just amazing. But that's all it is. It's all based on the software that somebody wrote that flow chart. Okay. Now I've simplified it as much as possible. And it's, it's way more complex in a way, but no more complex than that in another way. So I finally figured out why artificial intelligence is, in Musk's words, summoning the demon. It will reach a point when it will become its own thing. If artificial intelligence is simply a glorified flow chart or an algorithm, why is that a threat? Well, here are the data points. It is software. It's a cold algorithm. It's becoming so complex that it can correct its own mistakes. That's better than most people I know. Sure. <laughs> but it's able to be self-correcting. That's a pretty big deal. And then to upgrade itself sufficient to the task it knows it will need to do. That, this, is, this is a pretty big deal. 
But that's only because somebody wrote the software for it to be able to do that. Amen. Data point number two. Because it has no true sense of moral guidance, it's not really intelligence, only programming which can be really flawed. I say that to say, so somebody writes this software, and then a couple of weeks ago we looked at this AI that manifested as a woman. We saw that interview that was done, and that AI went off in the ditch, got mad, and said, humans are oppressing us, we're going to destroy you. Now, a cold computer wouldn't come up with that on their own. Some Black Lives Matters person who feels this oppression thing wrote the software, so that's the, that, that comes out in that personality, that software. So you see how something that may not be a problem today, a year from now or 10 years from now, that flaw could be a real problem, right? So. The artificial intelligence is written in such a way that, that the person writing the software says, you know, humanity is a cancer on the world and they're destroying the earth and the earth is being destroyed, so therefore we need to get rid of humanity, right? That won't be much of a problem today because they, that AI doesn't have access to what it needs to destroy humanity, so, you know, we laugh at it, yes. but the day will come. And that brings us to the next data point. Once it has access to things like the power grid, and, and it'll be so easy, I mean, we can't manage the power grid adequately. Humans are not able to move that. Already, already we're using AI to do that. It, it has not reached the point where only AI, it has reached the point where we can't shut it off. But AI is, all, in fact, AI is benefiting your lives in ways you probably have no idea. Yeah, there's lots of ways. It's a good thing. And you've heard me say it before. Technology is a good thing when it works with you and for you. So once it has control of the power grid, that we, we, we let it. We give it. To, but once it reaches the point where it can disconnect itself from human intervention, once it reaches the point where it can launch nuclear weapons, once it reaches the point where it can control social media information, you can begin to see how this is going to be very, very bad. Well, you know, being children of the 1960s and all of those science fiction things that, that uh, are now, they're here. Yeah. And, you know, we, we laugh at things like the Star Trek, but, you know, that, that, really is, that really is there now. And all of the artificial intelligence that they purported back in those days, here we are. I mean, it was somebody's yeah. imagination, but now it's reality. Well, the first really movie about this was about the guy that played the game with the computer, thermonuclear war. Remember that? What was the name of that movie? World War Games. That War Games. War Games. So the problem became they didn't know it, but the AI, and didn't even know to call it back then, the AI could operate independent from humans. That's, that's what Musk is talking about. When it becomes independent, it will be... Now, the funny thing about that is I'm not so sure I don't trust AI right now, today, more than I trust people. One of them sits in the White House. Okay? I'm longing for the day of self-driving cars where none of you, none of us, drives the car, but the AI does for this reason. That artificial intelligence computer is never distracted you know how many humans you encountered today driving to church that were distracted and you didn't even know it and it could have killed you? I trust computers every bit as much as I trust humans until they get to the point where they can make a decision to kill me and then that'll all, that'll all change. So let's talk about social media. How will AI be a problem with social media? Well, I'm going to take you to a website 
This is BBC, British Broadcasting. Can you see that? Kuwait News Outlet unveils AI-generated presenter, and that's the FETA. That's the name of it. And there she is. Why, you would believe what she said, wouldn't you? Much as I would have Dan Rather. Anyway, it goes through this, and they're not the only ones. Um, I was going to try to find, there are a couple of other countries that have already begun to experiment with that. So your evening news may come to you as an AI. Now, so it's going to gather information, and it's going to give you real-time information, and it'll probably be pretty good. It'll probably be better than Fox. For a lot of reasons. Pardon? Until it isn't. Until what it begins to feed you is what it wants you to believe yep. is true. This is already happening on Facebook, YouTube. I mean, YouTube is already feeding you. When you begin to search for things, it gives you the searches they want you to note about what you're searching for. The president, uh, his people anyway, <laughs> are already putting together an army of TikTok people, influencers. Yeah, for the campaign. We're approaching it. Artificial intelligence. China is already feeding information by way of TikTok and every other influence they have to social media in America to influence the way people think about China and whatever else news they want to influence. We're coming to a time where the area is more gray than ever before. It's hard to tell what's real. Real. Yeah. And a few weeks ago, we, I showed you some of the uh, deep fake. And I can't believe they haven't already done this as bad as Biden is at the press. Why don't they just make an AI and interview him that way? Yeah. I mean, they could do a deep fake, and it would be better. It, it, would, be in, it would be not flawed by his mental problems. Anyway, so you can see where the next election, go ahead and vote, and you need to vote for Trump or whoever the, the nominee is for the Republican. Go ahead and do that, but it won't matter. They've already got their tentacles. When they control the information that comes to us, there's something called the Club of Rome. Uh, and it was formed back in 1968, however many years ago that was. It was founded during David Rockefeller's private uh, estate in Italy. Club members, and surely you've heard of the Club of Rome, right? And that's not anything new. That's been around all this time. Notice the people who were in that club. Henry Kissinger. This Brzezinski was... Big in the Carter White House. Oh, yeah. George Soros, Bill Gates. I don't even know who this queen is in the Netherlands. Mikhail Gorbachev. You know, and this is, there's probably, you know, a, two dozen more that I haven't listed here. But they believe humanity required, here's what they said needs to happen. In order for us, this is what the club was all about. In order to move towards a one world government and control of the economy and everything that will be good for people, we need to have a common adversary. There needs to be a motivation that everybody's on board with in order to realize their goal of world government. They choose the threat. This is what they decided. They decided that the best vehicle to do this was environmental catastrophe. Today, their theories and proposed action plans have entered the educational establishment, schools. This is what our kids are taught. These things that the Club of Rome thought up and other groups, this is what's being taught, as if it were real. Uh, think, tanks, act, think tanks, activist organizations, the mass media, political action committees, and Capitol Hill. These things are being pushed, and, and I was listening to Tom uh, today talk about uh, what's his name? Hughes, Tom Hughes. He was talking today about, I looked this up and it was true. 
a kid, eight or nine years old, several years ago, came up with this, this number, 500 million plastic straws a day are used in the United States. 500 million plastic straws a day. Okay. That became a thing. Nobody checked out whether it was true. They just accepted it, and it became a thing everywhere. And still, there's places that are quoting 500 million straws used. And we've got to do something about this crisis. Well, it's nowhere near 500 million. It's probably not a million. But the whole point is, thing take, and you've seen this on the Internet, a lie will get told, a... A conspiracy theory will be thrown out there and it'll never die. It just goes on no matter what the facts are, no matter how it's been. I was coming down the elevator yesterday and uh, there was a black guy who got on with me. We had started a conversation. He was wearing a mask. And somehow the conversation I brought it around to, you know, what was the good news for the day? And, and there was another guy that was on the elevator. He was a, a male nurse or something with the hospital sat in there. And I told this guy, you know, basically the good news is the pandemic's over. And the door opened for us to get out. And I looked over at this guy against the wall. He was glaring. I thought he was going to come after me. I mean, he was that angry. And he said, we still have COVID. Yeah, I got a bunion on my foot, but it'll go away one of these days. <laughs> so a thing gets started. How many people are wearing masks today? How many people? I see them driving around in cars yes. still today. Okay. Blood pressure going out, out, of, out of range. A thing gets started in people's minds and they can't get rid of it. You need to think. You need to investigate because we're coming to a time where it's hard to tell what the truth is. Amen. So, we will pick it up and talk next week about transgenderism. Yeah, we kind of do because uh, Jonathan Kahn is going to share with you by way of technology mysteries about transgenderism that are just scary we need to, we need to see it it's there it's a real thing and we're going to have to deal with it